How to answer a F5 exam standard question in 10 easy steps by Rob Sowerby. That's me. What I've picked for F5 is a typical question. It happens to be on variance analysis. But please note that the topic is not what I'm so much interested in here. I will be answering this question in full. But at the same stage, what I'm trying to focus on are skills that you may use in any F5 question. So, we're looking at June 2010, question two. Sticky Wicket Co. Um, I would strongly advise that you go to the ACCA website and you print off both the question, and if you wish, the answer as well. Not that I've looked at that, of course. Um, Get that download and have it with you as you look through uh, the presentation. It will make a little bit more sense to you. Okay, let's go. Here are the ten steps. What I want to do is to take you step by step by step by step by step through it. And we'll get there in the end. The first step is question approach. How do you deal with the question from the beginning? Well, there's the question. It looks quite long. Obviously, you can't read it there, but you don't need to for this. Firstly, when you look at your exam, you have three hours and 15 minutes. The first 15 minutes are for reading time. Now, during that reading time, you can't write on the paper or use your calculator. So what you need to do there is to use that time wisely. My suggestion is that you use that time to analyse the requirement and to skim read the narrative. You can do this in 15 minutes if you know what you're doing. Now, the requirements have to be considered first because they drive the question. They show you how you have to interpret the question and what you have to do. Then, skim through the narrative. Try and get some understanding of what each paragraph is trying to tell you. Now, I will say that in F5, quite a lot of the time, the examiner tries to make this easy for you. I don't know if you can notice from the information below... But what happens is you've got narrative, 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 requirement, then narrative, 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 requirement. I think the suggestion there from the examiner is that the narrative down to the first requirement is dealt with first, and then, and only then, do you look at the stuff below. This is quite common. Allow the way the examiner's laid it out to help you. The other thing that tends to happen in F5, not all the time, but it's quite common, is that you get the discursive parts before the computation. Again, that is designed to help you. The suggestion is that if you do the discussion first, the narrative parts, you will get a higher mark than if you do the computations. I think the risk of doing it the other way around is that the computations take over and you run out of time and you can't do yourself justice on the written parts. So, summary. In the 15 minutes reading time, what you must do is, at the end of it, understand the question order. Which question you'll do first, second, third and fourth. If you've looked at all the requirements, you will have picked up which questions you like, which questions you don't like. And of course, play to your strengths. Do the early questions first. Secondly, timings. For each part of every question, you're going to have to break down the timings. We'll see that in a moment. And thirdly, an understanding of the question structure. What are you being asked? 